the big finish tonight, an industry dominated by working moms just got a serious wake-up call. Hundreds of workers walked off their jobs across New York City yesterday. This is an unprecedented strike by mostly non-union workers. Their target is the fast food industry. Some people might think fast food employees are just teenage kids out there flipping burgers, making minimum wage until something better comes along. Not the case. The median age of a fast food employee in this country is 28 years old. 66% of fast food employees are women. On average, those women are 32 years of age or older. Fast food is dominated by adult employees. Most fast food workers are part-time. Managers keep them working under 40 hours per week to avoid paying them full benefits. Most make about $18,000 a year, just above minimum wage. The workers in New York City are asking for a raise. They want $15 an hour. I can imagine some Americans think it's a lot to ask when you're in a recession and millions of people don't even have jobs right now. They take a look at uh, a number of different things across the country. But I want you to look at this report. A new report shows corporate profits just hit a record high. Companies are making more money than they have ever made before. The workers are simply asking for a fair deal. It's just ridiculous that they're, they're not willing to bargain or they're not willing to sit down and have a contract. Your crew workers are the ones who are generating this uh, money for you. So please, $15 isn't a lot, give us a raise. Right now we're living in poverty. Like these companies are making billions of dollars and we are not being appreciated for the work that we do. So they're, give, they're giving us uh, like $7.25, maybe $8. And like because of that, most of these people, most of my co-workers, they actually have to rely on food stamps and other government help. More and more Americans might need to rely on fast food wages. People at companies like Sensata and Hostess are getting laid off and looking for jobs. Fast food workers in New York City are demanding a better deal for everyone. Reporter Sarah Jaffe wrote this analysis for The Atlantic. Cheap fast food and their cheap workers impose a cost on the country in the form of food stamps, welfare through the tax code and social safety net programs. This is a place for government to intervene and for corporations to sacrifice some of their profits by raising wages to a livable level. Reporter Sarah Jaffe joins me tonight here on The Ed Show. Great hey, to have thanks. you with us. Excellent reporting. Uh, and your analysis, I think, is spot on. Do you think the strike was effective and will it have an impact? I think it scared the heck out of the bosses. I mean, all the workers went back into work today. Um, they were accompanied by elected officials. They were accompanied by clergy community leaders, and all but one were accepted back with no problems. One person, they attempted to fire her. There were about 100 people outside of the store within an hour holding what they, a rally. What, what do they want to do? They want to go through what union? What do they want to do? What's They're the forming an independent union. Um, this was an organizing drive started by a group called New York Communities for Change. Um, they do mostly community organizing, and they were working on housing issues when they started talking to fast food workers and finding out, like you said, that these are adults that they're supporting families. I spoke to a woman yesterday who has three kids. She's supporting on 7.25 an hour from Burger King. Mm. Um, and they decided to start organizing. And you know what? They're doing a pretty good job. We've just had a, a big discussion in this country about income inequality. Yep. And of course, the corporate profits are out there. But everybody knew corporate profits were f through the roof before they were reported again yep. today. Did this play into it? Did this motivate these workers? I think everybody knows, right? The workers at Walmart know it. The workers at McDonald's and Burger King in New York know it. Everybody knows that corporations are doing just fine and that the rest of us are getting squeezed. What kind of impact do you think this could have nationally? Imagine fast food workers across New York suddenly getting raised to $15 an hour. This is literally the lowest of the low paying industries. That would be a huge precedent. It would be amazing. Is there any indication that ownership or management of these franchises would move forward and, and do something for these workers? Oh, I mean, there's not an indication, but McDonald's, the, franchise, the franchisee doesn't set their own rules, right? The company gets to decide all the rules, they could decide to give their workers a raise and they could set a huge example for the rest of the country. You know, back in the day, it was high school kids that were flipping burgers and just waiting for the next best thing. Yeah. I, I, was, I was really taken by the number of single moms and the age of the workers in, in this country. You think that uh, is going to have a big impact on, on whether these companies decide to do something? I mean, this is the new economy, right? Back in the day, factory jobs weren't good jobs either. They were also low-skill, low-paying jobs. The reason that they became the middle-class jobs that we know 
because people organized. Sarah, what's the next move in this movement? And is it a movement? Oh, it's a movement. They are not giving up. Um, they are going to keep working. And they were, I spoke to Jonathan Weston from New York Communities for Change just before I came here. And they're hoping that more workers got energized by seeing this happen and by seeing everybody go back in today and not face reprisal. So the next phase, you think, is what? I'm hoping for more strikes, Ed. Do you, you're hoping for more strikes. Oh, yeah. you, you think they'll do it? You, you, I think they'll do it. Uh, do you think the 99% movement had anything to do with this? I think that it crystallized something that was already going on in this country that people knew about where the wealth was going, right? They knew over the last 30 years that we've seen it all going to the people at the top and the people at the bottom were just getting squeezed. Meanwhile, their productivity's gone up. They're working harder. They're working longer. And there has been no organized union that has gone in and and led them to do this. This is very grassroots, isn't this it? This is very grassroots. This is led by a community group. This is the workers deciding what they wanted by themselves. They are asking for a union. They're forming their own independent union. It would mm -hmm. be across the fast food franchises in the city. This is very interesting. It's pretty exciting. I mean, it's a change of the times. Yep. And they are speaking up. It's one to follow. Sarah Jaffe, independent journalist, thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. And that is The Ed Show on this Friday night. I'm Ed Schultz.